Hey everyone, this is the LEGO Creator Space Mining Mech. Now it is a three-in-one set and I will be covering all three of the official build versions in this one video because it feels like it's, it's worth it to me to see and talk about all of them in the plastic. Here's one of the official builds, a four-legged rover, explorer, sci-fi pickup truck walker thing with a couple of arms on the front. I'll tell you what though, at first glance to me, this looks believable. It looks right. It looks like something that I would see on the art station account of somebody who works on game design or uh, possibly even uh, movie design, you know, movie prop design and, and such. It has a certain sensibility to it with its balance. I like the offset of this rear section, which is kind of the bed or cargo holding section of it. So it's not completely, it's not completely centered. It, it just, it makes a lot of sense to me. It really looks like something that the person thought about and the colors go together decently well. Uh, what strikes me most in a bad way is that it has some red in the scheme that you can see if you look at it from a little bit lower but they needed to use those pieces. So, so I get it. This also uses two different colors of yellow in it that are obvious here. So there's just a regular yellow. And then down here at the feet is the cool yellow color or lighter yellow color. Uh, this is, like I say, it's like a pickup bed here. And these are the bits of cargo. There are three of these assemblies. I don't know what that represents exactly, but I think you're allowed to use your imagination. I think it is okay here. So you, know, you got some space to carry stuff around. You can articulate the legs a little bit, but they mostly just go up and down. You can also rotate them around, but there's an interesting thing you can do with that. If you put, I found if you put one leg, one front leg back and then one forward like this, it's not going to stand up all the way, but as long as this is rotated forward, see, it looks like it's kind of reaching forward. Like it has an awkward way of walking, but you know, you can get some sort of feel of motion that way. And then these arms here can move all around because they have ball joints on them and you can just grab things that are bar sized and such. The cockpit opens up and that is your operator. <laughs> that is intended to be the alien operator of this thing. Uh, maybe a little bit of a stretch there, um, but okay. I'll, I'll accept it. Some folks will, will like this a lot. It's not my favorite personally, but does that look like you could put a minifigure in there? It should look like it, because you can. Nice. No minifigure is included with this set. I just threw a random one in there for the sake of demonstration, but I appreciate that you can do it. And I don't feel that the set needed to come with a minifigure. This is interesting in and of itself, at least as a concept, you know, gets you thinking, okay, if you don't like this, what would you like? What would you like to put in this position? This is the other alternate build, the other non-primary build, and holy heck, this is weird and it is very tall. I could tell from the pictures that it was weird, you know, it's different, but I did not realize just how large it was going to be compared to a random minifigure. Look at that. Look at the sheer scale of that. That is impressive. I had no idea it was going to be so big until I started to actually assemble the thing you know, actually put it together fully. It really wasn't until I got the, the body attached to it. If I recall correctly, do you do the body first or the legs first? I don't remember which, which it was, but when those two went together, wow. <laughs> so uh, there's actually even more articulation with this one with nice knee jointing and ankle jointing there. And you've got the little toes you can use to help with balance. You can also splay the legs in and out so you can you know, find some ways, some creative ways to make this look like it's, it's kind of climbing and stuff. Now, because of its height, you are a little bit limited with physics, you know, reality and all that, but there we go. I mean, it is possible thanks to the toes, especially it is possible to put it into some poses that are moving a little bit. The only thing that's not going to work very well or particularly well is getting this back too far, getting the, the leg, any combination of the leg joints back too far because you can't move this ankle any farther up than that. It goes to 90 degrees and that's just it. So beyond that, you're going to start to need to put it on its toes. And then that can get a little bit, a little bit uh, relatively tricky. So I might not be able to get it to pose right there, but I very much appreciate the audacity of doing something so different, so odd, so weird. It doesn't, ah, there we go. 
that actually works. <laughs> it's a it's a crazy, funny, <laughs> awkward pose, but it is doable. Yeah, what can this even do? I guess it can shoot from down here, or maybe those are just lights. And then of course it's got this, which is gonna get you some communications capabilities. That was my fault for accidentally pulling it off there, being a little bit a little bit rough with it, but I mean, that could be seen as a weapon as well. And then on the back here, I guess this is where its energy store is. So here, those bright, uh, trans bright green pieces are being used to represent energy, maybe. I don't know, or eggs? I don't know. It's all alien, as it's supposed to be. So yeah, I have to respect this thing. Again, the audacity of it, of, the, of doing something that's this different, that's this alien. This has a cockpit as well with somebody in there, an operator. So pull this back and this guy comes out. Hey, wait, wait, let, let go, let go, let go. There we go, he's trying to hold on. So he's got a couple of, he's got a control panel right there and a couple of control sticks here off to the side. And then here's the dude. So this makes more sense to me. All right, this, this I get, this I understand. It's, it's humanoid, I don't need it to be humanoid, but you know, as as a build, as a creator build for something that has some sentience, maybe this just makes a lot more sense to me than the other thing. I don't know. It's just kind of obvious. But once again, does that look like you could put a minifigure there? Because you can. And again, no minifigure is included with this set, but I think that's okay. But if you do want to put a figure in, you can, and that's great. And just looking at this makes me think, Man, I want to I want to consider like other ways to use just this center build here or something like it with different legs or maybe even with some tank tracks, you know, some treads or something. Just do something completely different with it. Maybe make it into a, a four-legged thing itself where these are just the front legs of it. Imagine that, you know, or it could be even three-legged. It's just it's creative. And now for the main event, the space mining mech itself, the main model that uses all of the official pieces in the set. This one comes with multiple alien th things, alien type things, maybe. First of all, there's this guy. Okay, that is awesome. It's like a, it's like a miniature Mixel in its natural habitat or something like that. This is, this is perfect. It uses so few pieces, but look at all the expressiveness you can get out of it. And that's without even turning the eyes. This is great. This is great. <laughs> it's actually better. The, the more I look at it, the more I play with it, the better it actually gets. I mean, you can you can move the hands <laughs> back and forth and stuff. You can move the, the feet back and forth. Okay, uh, I will stop talking about this because it's it's just better than it deserves to be for the number of pieces used to build it. And then here's a little bit of terrain. Huh? Yes. So it's a space mining mech, so you would be mining in space, although not in space, rather on a planetary body or something like that. So why do we even call that space? I guess we kind of shouldn't. Hmm, never really thought about that. These are some things that you can mine. Some minerals that you get from the ground. Okay, excellent. Space mining mech, this is what you actually came here for, right? This is good. It, this is actually a little bit larger than I personally expected it to be based on the pictures of it, but not too much so. Let me just bring in a random minifigure to give you a sense of scale. See, that's not too bad. So it's not nearly as tall as that two-legged, no-arm version, but it's it's sizable. It's pretty good. You know, has has a good presence. Has that same color scheme from the last couple of space exploration things that they did in the creator line. I, I like that continuity that they go for. Uh, the arms are fully articulated, so these have the the ratcheted joint. Comes up and down. You can also splay in and out. And you got the little pauldron there that could potentially move out of the way if you need it to, but you don't really need it to. This arm has the cutting disc on it for the actual mining process. That looks pretty good. A little bit repetitive to do the teeth there, but they're very strong. They're not going to fall off easily. That is something that I appreciate. I, I don't like lining up one by ones, but I like the fact that this does not easily fall apart and fall off. I like the other arm better though, because the other arm has a hand with fingers. They're like, uh, 
They're like raccoon fingers. Now, you're able to splay these a little bit. They are a little bit limited in their, their range of motion. Just the pieces kind of get in their own way. But it's not bad. I like the use of the black Baraki eyes to be fingers. That's why it just looks so much like raccoon fingers, raccoon hands to me. And this has actual studs, not anti-studs, studs in the palm, as well as an opening for an axle. So you can attach different types of things to that. That's good. Ball joints, oops, accidentally did this the wrong way. That's my fault right there. Rotate it around. There we go. Ball joints for elbow and wrist. So you can do some different stuff with this. Got to be careful how I pose the fingers though. And then, oh yeah, well, let's talk about legs, shall we? Well, I'm talking about articulation. Back, forward, side to side. <laughs> also the same thing with the, the ankles, back, forward, side to side. Not as useful though, and no articulation at the knees, obviously. But I do like the bends. Those knees are done a little bit differently from most mechs that they've done. Yeah, it's kind of cool. I like the black part. I like the kneecap part. It's kind of simple, but it looks good to me. Uh, but I mean, yeah, you're able to get enough articulation out of this I think to to get uh, basically to get it to look like it's moving, you know, to get some sense of of action and activity out of it. So I think that's all good. Bring this back. Yeah, you know, it's just strolling along, you know. Ain't care. Okay, you know, <laughs> kind of look do to do. This this is different. This is very different. Because look, that's the operator's compartment, right? But it's not really an alien. Is it an alien or is it an alien computer? And there are two forms. Now, do those represent two consciousnesses or just two states? You know, two, two, uh, two states of, of, of thought or of processing for the, the computer, if you just consider this to be a computer. But once again, does that look like a minifigure might be able to fit in there? It kind of does. This one looks a little bit potentially tighter. I've just moved my random minifigures hands around and the hair around a little bit, but something like that should work. Clink. Ta-da! Again, no minifigure included in this set, and I think that's okay, but you can put a random minifigure in there if you want to. Lastly, this has boosters and stuff. Well, that's cool. And... I put those on backwards. <laughs> Obviously, because you want to have you want to have the glow, right? I talk about this with with other things. You want to have the glow facing out, and that's actually there. You go. That's what you can do with that. And this whole thing on the back is a backpack, so it's kind of a booster pack that's added on to this mech. So there are probably some versions in universe of this mech that don't have the booster pack, but you can also use this booster pack to hold some stuff. So when you do your mining and you pick up some material off the surface, you can place it in there. And there are you know, different ways you can connect things. I like that. I like all this back here. It's not really designed to be easily removed as one thing. You could just leave it off if you want to, but let me see if I can do that right now. Oh, watch it. Just, just disintegrate. No. All right. There we go. So yeah, simple enough for customization per precise. And <laughs> all. There you go. That's pretty much it for this. Plenty of articulation. Good, uh, good parts of the build. Good sub assemblies. Good overall look. Weird controller, but makes enough sense to me. Doesn't need to have arms and everything if it's just a computer, right? It's controlling a mech. Probably has other mechs and cranes and things to put it in, take it out, move it around. This is good. Last up, these are the spares left over when you do the main build. Very few of them. Now, this is the part of the video out of all parts of review videos in particular that I do where things can turn a little bit negative because this is where I talk about price and value. Why is this the point where things can turn negative? <sighs> Frankly, because I wasn't raised rich. So I value the dollar. I value my dollar. I value your dollar as well. I think that money has value. I think that everybody deserves to get some value for their money when they when they use it. So, 
you know, when they spend it. So I'm not going to buy a ridiculously overpriced set and just say, oh, <laughs> it costs a thousand dollars. Oh, well, <laughs> still really good. You should buy it <laughs> if it seems totally overpriced. And so sometimes I have to go negative if something is totally overpriced. Thankfully, I paid $25 for this. Brand new. That's its suggested retail price. Comes with 327 pieces, and that means that its price to part ratio is quite nice. Its price to volume of stuff ratio is also pretty good. I feel that Lego could have charged $30 for this, and I would have been okay with that, given the entirety of the experience. It doesn't feel like it doesn't feel like a great price to volume of stuff ratio. Just looking at this one finished product here, if if I price that at, price this at thirty dollars US, but it's it's okay given that, or would be okay given that I'm familiar with how it actually went together. I'm familiar with how many pieces are here, the amount of time that went into assembling this, and I also give value to the alternates, the alternate builds. But it's not $30, it's $25. And that is a good deal, I think. Not a great deal, not a steal, but a good deal. And overall, I've had a very positive experience with this entire set, not just with the main build, but with all three. This is another one of those cases where all three of the builds are good, you know? I expect the standard for three-in-one sets to be main build, better be darn good, better, better be worth every penny of its full price, given that that's where all the pieces go. Secondary build should be good, should be something that some people out there will prefer to the main build. And then the tertiary one, the third one, is like, I kind of expect it to be messy looking. You know, I, I expect poor color schemes. I expect a little bit of rainbow look. I expect it to not necessarily look purpose designed. You know, there can be a little bit of design despair involved in, in the creation of the, uh, the third, the third model in these three in ones. But here I didn't feel any of that. All three are respectable. All three have inspired me a bit, probably the tall one, the most, the four legged little one, uh, in second place, I would, I would say, and I'm going to hold on to that inspiration. I'm, I'm going to continue to think about those things, even after I've gotten this torn back down again to just plain parts. I, I will continue to think about some of those pieces and some of those looks, not exact build techniques, but just some of what spoke to me in those designs. So that's a little bit subjective, a little bit, you know, just my own thing, but I like this. I like this set. Period. There you go. Good stuff. Kudos to the designer, to be sure. I don't have a pure build video or a speed build video for any of the versions of this because I did them on my own time, including the disassembly and reassembly. But I do continue to do those build videos and, and record them and publish them over on the pure builds channel and my Jang builds it channel. So if you like that type of content, check out one of those appreciate your time here. Hope this was useful for you. Even if you ended up not liking this set yourself, I hope that at least what you saw in this video helped you to make your own decision, you know, to come to your own conclusion. So thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking with me to the end and I'll talk to you again soon.